Well, but you know, there are a lot of ISO standards, right? ISO 9000 and uh, 27001, et cetera, et cetera. And many data center operator owners are using the ISO standards. Nothing wrong with that, but there are some risks and some challenges there. First of all, uh, we see that the ISO standards are pretty generic. They were not specifically written around a data center environment. Therefore, uh, we have still some gaps left and right. There might not be a proper integration with our uh, specific data center environment. The other thing that we see in ISO that sometimes is a bit avocadabra what we are reading. Huh? You're reading a statement, thou shall protect the parameter. What do you mean, thou shall protect the parameter? Does it mean I need to put 20 people around my building with, a, with an M16 gun or do I uh, put electronic measures in place or what, what is adequate, right? What is enough, what is too little? And that could be quite challenging for organizations. So that's why typically when you implement ISO, you start hiring consultants. And as you know, consultants have all their own opinions and that opinion might even vary from the auditor who is the person that ultimately will put a chop and says you are compliant. Uh, so this is quite a tricky part. The other problem that I always find with uh, the ISO implementation for data centers, that is really an all or nothing game, right? There is no uh, respect you know, for the various level of maturity uh, or requirements that organizations have. It's kind of like you do it all or you're not. It's, it's really a pass fail option. And that is a bit of a trouble. That also leads to the issue that when you have this all or nothing type of standard, you as a business cannot decide what is your priority. You cannot say, well, this is a bit more important than the other one, and this is where I want to put my resources in, because in the ISO standard, it doesn't leave you that choice. It's kind of like you do everything from page one till the last page, so to speak. So what will be another option is that is the DCOS, the Data Center Operations Standard. The beauty about this particular document is that it's written specifically for data centers. It honors and it has taken a lot of guidance also from the variety of ISO standards that you typically find in the market uh, deployed in the data center. And it has the, the maturity levels built in. So that gives, of course, a great advantage uh, when applying this particular standard. It doesn't conflict with ISO. Uh, it could be uh, you know, aligned with it. Uh, you could have ISO already implement DCS or the other way around and still enjoy things like maturity levels. So what is in the DCS? Well, when we started developing the DCS, the first thing we looked at is say, what are all the primary functions within a data center? Uh, we have, of course, the infrastructure itself, uh, the good old uh, electrical, mechanical, and telecoms infrastructure. And then we have all those services around it to make the data center be able to deliver, you know, the IT services and application services to its customer. So what we said, we said, okay, we take all those services. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that it's a very practical document that gives the operator owners the ability to slowly implement it. We don't want the big bang. We want to have a progressive approach, as we call it, uh, for implementing and growing the scope and maturity of the organization. It's all about risk reduction yeah, and making sure your organization yeah, is better aligned with regulatory and business compliance, especially for certain industries. So it's a really nice framework for you to tap on and basically you know, minimize the risk. Well, it is a standard and it's, you know, as I said, very practical. Uh, it was written, you know, by people that do data center operations on a daily basis from a variety of organizations uh, in various countries around the world. Um, and it's basically, you know, as I said, uh, well aligned with the data center environment and, and ISO where applicable. And it's, you know, well endorsed, you know, around the globe by a variety of organizations that have provided their input also to develop this particular standard. So just a quick highlight, uh, it's, a, it's an ISO uh, NC based development cycle that we did. Uh, you know, all the criteria are available, so there's no guessing. It's very practically described, so there's no, uh, you know, question marks typically about what you should do. Uh, aligned with ISO, as I said, it has the maturity level built in. Yeah, there are auditors that can actually review your data center covering all those 11 or less disciplines uh, up to your choosing. 
Now, I'm not going to bore you with, uh, you know, going through this whole chart, but just to show you, and again, when you get the video of this particular presentation, you can go through it uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, but this is the development cycle that we have followed, which is exactly the way NC and ISO, you know, develops a standard as well. So what is in the DCOS? Well, here you see the high level 11 domains that are addressed. Obviously, we start with service level management, a very key component, because if you don't know what services your customers, whether they are internal or external, are expecting, then the rest doesn't matter, right? You don't know what processes to put in place and to what level you need to develop them, et cetera. So we go first with service level management and then basically trickle down the rest of the organization and to put all the right processes in place. Now, in each of these domains, yeah, there are also subdomains, right? So in this particular example, we talk about service level management. Well, what is in service level management? Well, a number of subdomains. Again, I'm not going to bore you by reading them one by one. Uh, but as you all know, service management all starts with needs analysis to understand your customer. And then from there, you start developing your requirements uh, in terms of what they need from a support perspective, commercially, technically. And then you start building your organization and all the processes around it. So we have for each of those 11 domains, yeah, there is a whole range of subdomains uh, that you could look at uh, and refine your internal stuff. As I said, uh, very practical. Again, so, you know, here you can see a, a quick uh, uh, you know, copy of a page. Uh, we don't do mysterious, you know, the descriptions. We basically tell you, you know, in very clear terms what you need to do and how you need to do it. It doesn't mean that you can't you know, variate from this particular part. So there might be scenarios where you have another way of doing it, but still establish the intent of a particular requirement, and that will be all good, not a problem at all. We also have in the DCS a lot of checklists. So for those of you who wonder you know, about how to maintain your generator, your UPS, etc., although it might be maintained by your uh, supplier and vendors, uh, this is a good checklist to also look at, say, what you can do from your end. As I said, Progressive approach. Now, this is a very important part because we all know we're very busy in the data center industry. We can't do too many things on the site. Uh, and if we want to make improvements, then we want to do it, you know, as in time uh, and business requirements require it and resources permit them. So what you could do as a customer, you could say from those 11 domains, I pick the ones that are critical to me or where I feel I have quite a challenge. And then you can, you know, slowly review that one, implement and raise your maturity. So when we talk about progressive, there are two types of progressiveness in the DCS. That is either the scope uh, by taking one or multiple disciplines and grow them over time and the maturity level. So you could, for example, be at maturity two uh, in uh, 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 various domains. And then you can say, let grow that to, for example, maturity level three or four. Now, what is the best one? Yeah, obviously level five, right? That is where everything works nicely together. You have full management control over all the processes within the scope. And that is obviously what we ultimately would like to achieve. But whether that's possible, that is the question. Now, when you do an audit for DCS, you will get a nice chart that shows you where you are compared to your chart, uh, target. So in this case, uh, the target was level three, but the customer in some areas overshot, but in quite a few areas, they undershot it. And of course, for the subdomain, so you could get a similar chart. And of course, the audit report will give you some guidance on things that you could consider and to improve your processes and therefore reduce your risk. So once you have that report, of course, we start working on the uh, uh, improvement plans. So we're looking at the gaps and then we start looking at, you know, who should close the gap. We put a champion in place, so to speak, and put some realistic uh, timeframes around it and make sure that you have the right amount of people to slowly implement them. And then once that is implemented, then obviously you could do a reassessment and obviously celebrate your achievements. And that could be by means of having a cert on the wall and a nice uh, indicia that you can use in your communication with your customer to show that you are very serious about you know, operations. Plenty of customers have done it already uh, to various level of, uh, of maturity. So uh, you will be uh, recognized as well. So what is the best way of, of looking at all that? Well, uh, very simple steps, right? Read the DCS first, uh, just a, a general walkthrough. 
then start looking at which domains you think are the most relevant for you to improve in your organization. Check uh, on the gaps, either by do it internal or use an external organization. Make some uh, action plan, celebrate success. And then over time, as you are maintaining your relevance and your compliance to DCS, uh, expand the, the scope maybe or improve maturity or just keep it at the level that you deem to be appropriate. 